Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So, welcome to another single figure review. So, I decided to do, of course, another one because I have another anticipated figure that I'd like to unbox for all of you today. So, without further ado, let us get into the figure itself. <laughs> So yes, right here we have this actually pretty reasonably sized box. So this is the Fate Grand Order Katsushika Hokusai and Totosama 17th Saber figure from Goodsmog Company. So this is the Saber class version of Hokusai from Fate. And yeah, so I'm very excited to open her up because, you know, I had her on pre-order for like quite a while now, I believe since 2021 or so, or 2020, I'm not too sure when she first went up for pre-order. But, you know, love the design for Hokusai, so, you know, I really want to pick up this figure. And unfortunately, I think at the time I missed the pre-order for the Fat Company Hokusai figure. And either that or she was up for pre-order and I just didn't go through with it because she was uh, quite a lot of money. But, you know, I'm glad I could get this, like, a little bit more inexpensive Hokusai figure and I really do like the design. So, yeah, I'm very excited to open this up for all of you and without further ado, let us first get into the general information section. So, some general information for this figure. So, this figure was manufactured by Good Small Company, and originally she was supposed to be released in January of 2023, but she ended up getting pushed into February of 2023. The dimensions for this figure, so she is a 1 7 scale figure measuring at about 9.36 inches tall. So price-wise and where I got her from, so I ended up buying her from Ami Ami, and here is actually where the price gets a little bit weird. So I believe at the time she went up for pre-order, I pretty much pre-ordered her right away. So at that time she was 24,700 yen. Now later down the line, I, you know, I look back at Ami Ami every once in a while to see the price of a figure. You know, just to see where it's at, if it's gotten like more expensive, a little less expensive than it was. And I noticed that on her page, she got bumped up to 28,310 yen, which is roughly $211.68. So yeah, they bumped her price up on Ami Ami. I'm not too sure if Good Smile was like, hey, raise her price, you know, um, we, we change our minds or something, or, you know, maybe they got word that the inn wasn't going to be too good and they want to make profit, so yeah. I got a little worried that I'd have to end up paying that 28,310 yen price tag, but thankfully, I got the email from Ami Ami and I was pretty much locked in at that 24,700 yen price tag, so dodged a little bit of a bullet there. And I believe pretty much like the base price I had to pay for her was roughly 200 USD, maybe a little bit less, maybe a smidge more, but yeah, I saved a little bit of money in the long run. So now moving on to the shipping method, I ended up going with DHL for this. So starting off with EMS, it was 8,620 yen. DHL was a little bit less than that at 8,472 yen. Air parcel was 7,450 yen, surface parcel was 3,510 yen, and surface mail premium was 4,914 yen. So yeah, DHL was surprisingly a little bit less, so I paid for that method so I can get her a little bit quicker. And after that, we're gonna go on to the box size I got. So it was in an Ami Ami size 120 box, which I was quite surprised actually. I thought it was going to be maybe like a 140 or so. And yeah, and you know, I opened the box and you know, I looked at her. I was kind of surprised at the end of the day that she was single shipment. I don't know what sort of warrants a figure getting a sort of single shipment tag and such. So, you know, I thought maybe, you know, she didn't need to be single shipment at the end of the day and she could have been shipped with some other figures. 
Um, at the time I'm recording this audio, I haven't actually unboxed her, so I'm not too sure if it's because also the accessories that she comes with that sort of warrants that, you know, single shipment tag. But yeah, I don't know, that's just my thought overall when first unboxing her from that box. So if you kind of notice, maybe it looks a little bit different with the lighting, but what happened yesterday was I actually did start unboxing this, um, but the lighting was pretty awful. There was quite a big glare and I just couldn't go through with it and I got kind of a little bit frustrating while trying to unbox the figure for reasons I'll get into later. But yeah, so she's unboxed. I did kind of take her out a little bit and you know, we're just going to do, um, I'm just going to fake it. Okay, so let's just get started with that. So yeah, here she is so far out of the blister, she's up front, and then there's like multiple layers of this to get through, so yeah, of course I already removed the tape, so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'll get started with just taking her out of the blister right now. And so actually starting off with her base right here, so it's a pretty nice design on it. It's like a clear plastic and they just put like a design on the inside. It's like the waves and I believe Mount Fuji's in the background and it's like encircled by like birds. So base is very nice so far. I do like the design overall. And let me tell you, the first time I took her out of the box, this has to be like the lightest figure, like scale figure wise, that I've ever held. Like she is like extremely light. And overall design, I'm liking what I see so far with the sculpt and all that. And her skin has like sort of this like texture to it in a way. Um, I believe the other figure that I know kind of has like a texture kind of like this is like the Maithos Miku has a little bit of texture to the skin, but yeah. And so far, she is looking pretty nice. I don't notice anything too, you know, off with it. So, yeah. Also, I did put her on the base before yesterday, and she's got, like, metal- they got metal rods to put in, and it is kind of hard to take her back out, like you really have to take your time, like it's a very snug fit, so if you're dismantling this figure in the future, if you have to move or something, or you're selling it, yeah, just take your time with taking it, oops, <laughs> with taking it out of like those metal pegs, because it was kind of like hard to get her out, and okay. So after that, we have her little pouch that's full of her paintbrushes, I believe, and it's very nicely sculpted. You can tell like that they sculpted in like the wrinkles and the shading looks very nice overall. And I forgot to also mention the instruction manual. There are steps to do, so I'm going to try and follow them um, correctly. Okay, so the next thing I put in obviously is the thing on her side. This piece scares the crap out of me because it's a, it's like a plastic piece to kind of match like her skin. But you kind of, like you have to literally push it like in sideways. I thought you had to like angle it a little bit more. So I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I might not even put it in all the way just cause I'm like that scared to do so. But yeah, like in the future, I just be careful with like, like putting this in and just taking it out, I feel like just because of how like it the peg is, it's a, it's a little bit scary. So that's just my advice for that. Okay, now moving to the back, 
Um, so I, this is the part I haven't actually unboxed on camera before and it's definitely kind of like a little bit stressful and I got a little frustrated, I'm not gonna lie. And that's because this figure has a twist tie and let me tell you, I, I still don't know how to get this whole thing off. Like, Normally when it comes to unboxing figures for me, I try to keep like everything intact and if it comes with a twist tie, I try to keep it intact. But this little sucker right here, I swear, is like the worst thing I've ever encountered. Like, like I'm legit gonna think I have to cut this thing because I can't, I can't stand it, so. Yeah, I didn't have these yesterday, so now I have to use these pliers just to get that off because I hate it. Okay, so I got the rest of the parts out and yeah, so I ended up having to cut that twist tie because it's the biggest pain in the butt I've ever- they even look like they like, glued it. Like, <laughs> okay. So after that we have little Totosama right here and very nicely done. Oh, he looks super cute, he's even got his own gar goggles. So yeah, and then we have the the pretty much like her the back piece of it, which is absolutely massive. So I'm gonna take sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna take to working this out. So yeah, overall this back piece is like holy moly it's it's very gorgeously detailed like i noticed we even have some that i guess that's not hokusai related um but it's just a whole bunch of different patterns but i noticed like we have like i think like van gogh sort of style on the front yeah and just yeah this is like definitely one of my favorite parts of this figure it's definitely all these different design fabrics so yes and now we have to attach this thing and I am quite nervous because this is like massive. Also, actually, I should also mention pretty light as well. I'm very surprised that this is like, you know, pretty light. I mean, it's like, you know, thin plastic pretty much for these fabrics, but I don't know. I thought this would be a little bit heavier, but the weight will surely add on once I add it to the figure. So, oh my god, okay, so overall, I had a pretty tough time putting this, like, obi, it's called like an obi uh, piece to her, and I am very scared in the future when I have to take her apart, because it was just kind of intimidating trying to put this all in. Um, <laughs> I really don't think I'm going to be able to do, like, close-ups and stuff for this, because it was just a little bit stressful. But basically, yeah, it was quite a bit of work. Um, I'm very scared to take this like apart um, in the future and just having to put it back together because, yeah, basically, first it says to put like the top piece in, and essentially, 
you know, it kind of leans up against like the satchel with the brushes and I was scared that if I push too hard, I twist that like piece right down here and I could snap that piece off. So yeah. And then I struggled with getting the, um, the other peg into the bottom leg and I had trouble pushing it in so it's like kind of like flush with her leg. And yeah, so definitely pretty tricky. This is definitely a piece you have to take your time with. And yeah, also like the strategy I used for this and it was not really the best day for me to, to have my nails painted. Um, is to kind of go under like this like Van Gogh style OB and just push in from there. <sighs> but yeah, I'm, I feel kind of stressed and a little bit, a little bit frustrated, I won't lie. I mean, maybe I'm sure other people, you know, either had the same experience or maybe had an easier experience, but for me, um, I like taking my time with things, so that's what happened. Um, now I have to pick you up. Still surprisingly very light though, like I'm picking this up with one hand and it's like no sweat, so that's good. Okay. After that, which is the second to last piece, we have <laughs> Toto-sama and yeah, he looks very nice overall. His like suckers are a little bit, you know, they're textured, they're sculpted in there, which is very nice, so yeah. So he also comes with like a little like shrink um, resistant, uh, what do you call it? Shrink resistant plug, okay. And he also has like a little brush in his hand, which is delicate. So we're just gonna take our time with this as well. So I managed to get him in. It's not too bad up here with the peg that goes up, but you literally have to kind of like wrap him around this sword. And the back piece, um, where it connects like right over here, so not at the front, but this was fine. But back here, it was kind of sliding out a little bit with me. It has like ridges to it and I don't know, like I can't, it's like I just can't see around this figure too well to put stuff together. But it's in, it's it's snug. And oh my god, it took forever. Okay. So now we have at least one more part, which, I, you know, I pray is like the easiest. Also, wait, uh, I forgot to mention. Um, he's got like some like f wings on the back, which are very pointy. And they're also fragile. And it's just like, this figure I feel like is like fragile kind of to put together. At least from what I'm experiencing. You know, there you pretty much this figure is going to take you like quite a long time to put together just because of all the parts. Um, again, I'm sure everyone has had a different experience with this figure, but for me, it's it has been quite the stressful endeavor. So yeah. And lastly, which should hopefully be the two easiest parts to put in, are her other hair pieces. I'm not too sure. Okay, 
definitely the easiest part to put in and I guess what's kind of nice is you can kind of like adjust these you can kind of pose these a little bit on her um, I'm just gonna yeah that's kind of nice you can adjust these you can pose them any way you want definitely the least intimidating part they have metal pegs by the way to put in which I think is nice As you can tell, I am quite drained from that experience, but yeah. She is complete. Thank the lord, nothing terrible happened. It was just, I don't know, again for me it was just an endeavor just putting this all together. I love the design, but oh my god, you really have to like pretty much like move plastic pieces around, kind of like stretch them in a way, like pull them a little bit, but not so much that you snap them off and yeah, but I'm liking the way this looks. I do think she looks fantastic. I didn't notice like any like paint defects on mine, which is very nice. And yeah, fantastic like figure and design overall. Just definitely the assembly process can be a little bit time consuming. Definitely, you know, so far of my single figure reviews, definitely the most intimidating unboxing I have done. So yeah, anyway, you know, next up should be the B-roll. And yeah, so I'm excited to show like pretty much all these details off because it is very gorgeous in person. So starting off, we have Hokusai's box. Very nicely designed box overall. I do like obviously all the little gold details on boxes and you know, just figure boxes in general. I do like shiny details. And yeah, it mostly just gives obviously information about who painted the figure, who sculpted the figure the scale of the figure and such. And yeah, I think it's just, you know, very nicely done. Doesn't have artwork of the, you know, the original artwork that the figure was based on, but it is based off of the summer version of Hogusai from Fate Go. And yeah, and definitely like not as big of a box as I thought it would be, which, you know, I think is fine overall. Now, after this portion, I am actually going to be going through the process of putting this figure together, which I said I wasn't going to do, but I decided to do it for you all anyway to show kind of how torturous this was, for me at least. And obviously from this instructions, you can see that there's a lot to do, and it of course mentions delicate parts for this figure, which there are quite a few. So definitely be careful in putting this together. Starting off with the base right here, I do like the pastel design for it, and I think this is based off the background art for the for Hokusai um, in Fate Go, I believe. It's very nice overall. After that, we have Hokusai herself. All of the details are very well sculpted and shading, and I didn't notice any paint defects. She also has very nice texture to her skin and. Yeah, all of the- even like the bracelets and the thing on her hip, you know, they're very nicely painted and sculpted overall. Now, putting this into the base, it's, yeah, probably one of the easier parts for this figure. You just, you know, you simply just put it in. It's all good. <laughs> Nothing wrong. And next we have her little pouch full of her brushes. Now, very nice, like, paintwork on this, and I do like the little extra dark shading to it. It adds some depth to it. And now we put this into this part of her leg and it does have a plastic peg and I'm pretty sure this is a pretty sturdy plastic peg but take your time with it because I mean in the past I have snapped a few plastic pegs from angling it wrong but you know it shouldn't be too hard. And now we have the OB part and definitely a highlight for this figure because of all the different designs. We have flowers, we have cats on there, and we have this sort of Van Gogh style one. And we also have these katanas with different details on them, and it's very gorgeous overall. The different fabric parts are made of a, you know, a pretty sturdy plastic, but it's still like flexible. Obviously you just don't over flex them because you might snap something off, but yeah. Very gorgeous overall, and also pretty lightweight surprisingly. Now, putting this in, you want to start from her right hip, and yeah, this is where I got a little nervous because it did kind of push against, yeah, the little pink satchel that she has on her hip, which I was worried I was going to break off. And now, this bottom piece, you're going to see me do right here. I have to adjust my camera, and I basically shove my fingers into that area. I hold her leg with my other hand, and I push them together, and yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, you know, the plastic is pretty, again, flexible, and it's, you know, 
not too bad overall, but it just does take a lot of like work to do. After that, we have Teto-sama right here. He's very gorgeously detailed overall. I like, you have to say, the gold details. The wings are definitely sharp and pointed at the tips, and they are pretty fragile, so be careful, as well as the brush in his hand. So yeah, he's very well done overall. Didn't notice any paint defects on him. The shrink-resistant plug that he came with, that, yeah, I just want to show that it's there. Now, he's got two parts that you have to, you know, put him into, and... Yeah, basically you move one tentacle to the front and then, you know, you just shove the first piece right here in and then you do the other piece. And this one wasn't too bad, this front piece right here, you know, I mean, does require a little bit of like pushing and such, but it's not too bad overall. But after that, we have this pain in the butt part, which is this piece. I literally kind of had to pull it towards that piece and then really you really have to push this in hard and i feel like i tried doing it so many times and it just kept slipping out and it's very hard to do with this wing piece that is right behind him um again it said it's a fragile part so it's very tough to put in so yeah i just kind of did that i didn't really put it in all the way but that's the idea next are her hair pieces which are thankfully the easiest parts to put in the metal rods are different sizes, so you know when, if you're putting it in the wrong spot. Definitely the simplest step overall, thankfully. You know, and you can also pose these any way you want, which I think is very nice. So yeah, overall, definitely assembling this figure has to be the hardest part for me and kind of stressful because of all the fragile parts and such and, you know, how much force I had to use. But yeah, that's the assembly done for the Hokusai figure. So now we're moving on to the figure B-roll, and overall, Good Small Company did a fantastic job with translating this version of Hokusai into figure form. I love the overall sculpt and details and paintwork. Definitely no paint defects on mine. Later in the video, some of them might have been my fault. Again, I can't remember, like, looking up close. If, you know, it was my fault, it was probably my fault, because I feel like Good Small does a good job with the paint work on their figures overall. And, yeah. So, yeah, she's gorgeous. I love all the fabrics on it. Just the diverse patterns I really like. And just overall, I'm happy that I picked up this version of Hokusai at the end of the day. Now, definitely a con slash nitpick, and probably my biggest one for this figure, is definitely the assembly process. Now, again, maybe people had an easier experience than I did, but definitely putting this figure together was not easy. There's obviously a lot of areas that, you know, you could definitely get some paint transfer in, there's a lot of delicate details, and definitely a lot of bobbing and weaving just to put pieces in their places. So yeah, definitely overall I'd say take your time when assembling this figure because you don't want to end up breaking something or transferring too much paint. And yeah. The other thing I noticed is her size. Now I saw a bunch of people in my figure collection saying that she feels more like a 1 8 compared to a 1 7 and you know in person she definitely feels like a 1 8 just by looking at her. And I'm not too sure if this just is because of you know the obi or such or hokusai herself is just a very small character in general uh the size doesn't bother me too much um in general i mean heck you know maybe the smaller the better so i can have a little bit of extra space to put other figures up but yeah i'm interested to see what she would be like and a much you know a little bit larger than what she is but you know i'm happy with the size overall and yeah so i'm just obviously showing all the Gorgeous details overall for this figure. Hair sculpt, very well done. Also the little details on the top of her head. Yeah, I'm sorry for also like my not so good, um, I guess, putting this figure together. It was definitely hard to do with how, you know, challenging it was to kind of put stuff together. And also, you know, my camera work in this B-roll, I hope it kind of does her justice. Again, definitely better in person than from what I'm presenting, but, you know, I hope it does the job for the most part. Yeah, all the little tiny details on this one, and her little hip piece is very nicely done. I like the pearlescentness on that. And the bracelets, very well painted overall considering how small they are. Yeah, fantastic. And now this part might have been my fault, this part of the sword. I think this happened when I tried to put it like around her leg, I actually 
brushed it against and some paint came off and then Tejo Sama's wing unfortunately had this little area which I think was mostly my fault. Size comparison time we have Hokusai compared to the Nendoroid Marnie right here. After that we have a 1 7th Mari no Atrulis, who definitely does feel like a you know bigger 1 7th figure compared to Hokusai by a little bit. And lastly, we have the 1 4th X10 B style by Freeing, who definitely feels double the size of Hokusai. So overall, I definitely say that this is a gorgeous figure of Hokusai, and I definitely recommend picking this up if you are a big fan of this character. Good Small Company once again did a fantastic job with the sculpt, paintwork, and details on her. And yeah, so I'm overall just happy with the purchase and the fact that I got her for like 24,000 yen, so a little under 200 USD without shipping, I think is fantastic. Now, obviously, she wasn't without her issues. Obviously, the whole assembly process can be a bit of a pain in the butt, and it can be quite intimidating and time-consuming overall. And you do have the possibility of running into paint transfer, or if you handle it a little bit too roughly, broken pieces with some of those delicate parts. So yeah, definitely, again, a figure to take your time with. And additionally, I feel like some people might not like the size of this figure. Again, I feel like she definitely is quite small for a 1 7th. But, you know, I'm personally fine with the size. It doesn't really bother me too much. But if you're hoping for this to be, you know, your average 1 7 size figure, then you might be a little bit disappointed with that. So the last sort of downside to this figure that I noticed, and it was one that I noticed when I was doing the outro, is that the base can get scratched off. The design can actually get, you know, scratched off because it's not actually embedded in the acrylic. They pretty much like adhered this to like the bottom of the base. And the problem is if you have like, you know, any surface, like a rough surface especially, and you drag the figure like along that surface, the design is going to get scratched off, which is quite unfortunate. I do wish that they kind of embedded it in the acrylic or put like another sort of protective like layer at the bottom. And yeah, it's kind of sucks. Um, so if you keep doing that over time, you keep dragging that along the surface, um, the design will come off. So pretty much what I recommend doing is just if you have to dust her or anything, just pick her straight up and take her off the shelf. Don't just drag it along the surface because over time the design is going to get absolutely destroyed. So yeah, that was kind of something I noticed and thankfully it's just a little bit and you know, I noticed this now and thankfully not later. But yeah, so just be careful about that so you don't ruin the very nice design on the base. Now moving on to aftermarket pricing. So. Surprisingly, this is a figure that has stayed at retail price currently as I'm recording this video and it actually has gone down quite a bit. So I'm currently looking on Bai, obviously Yahoo Japan Auctions. I didn't see any listings for her on Mercury JP, but I did see her and also Yahoo Japan Shopping, I believe is the other one. So yeah, I've seen listings for 25,000 yen, so that's roughly 195 USD, so a couple of different listings that are, you know, a little above 200 USD and some that are under 200 USD. So yeah, surprisingly, the price for her has gone down, which is nice. Now I'm also going to jump to Mandarake, which I feel like I should have probably mentioned Mandarake when I was doing my other single figure reviews, you know, because obviously this is another place where you can get pre-owned figures and I'm looking at a bunch of her listings right now. There are currently five available hoku size on their website. So some of them are pretty much 22,000 yen and the highest is 27,000 yen. So it's like close to like Ami Ami's retail price for her. One sold for 18,000 yen. I'm not too sure if that one had like any sort of like broken pieces or anything, but yeah, so you can pretty much get her for like definitely under retail price, like under 200 USD, which I think is an absolute, you know, a pretty good steal. But yeah, I'm overall not too sure if this figure is going to go up at all. Currently, her prices are definitely below retail, so if you were thinking about getting this figure, maybe 
I don't mean to be a bad influence, but you should jump on some of these prices right now while they're still low. But I will, of course, also talk about Mondoraki shipping. You know, I log in and it tells me, you know, the estimated shipping prices to where I live. So EMS for this figure is 9,100 yen and DHL is 17,400 yen. So yeah, a little bit more shipping on Mandarake than Ami Ami, but the base price for the figure is definitely a lot lower. So you know, depends what you want. Um, currently she is still up on Ami Ami at the moment, and you know, if you don't mind waiting that quite a while for her, then you have obviously Surface as an option, but yeah. Overall, I am quite happy to have her in my collection, so she's pretty much going to be my Hokusai representation in my collection, unless, you know, there's another fancy gorgeous Hokusai figure that comes out in the very distant future that I might consider picking up, but I am quite satisfied with having this one as my main Hokusai figure at the moment, and also my first Fate figure, I realized, um, so yeah. Again, I love her design overall, and I'm very happy to have her in my collection. And I overall hope that this review helped you out if you were interested in picking up this figure. So, if you guys notice, um, I'm actually recording this outro like a week or so later. And, you know, I decided to update that old outro because some stuff has happened in, you know, the past week or so that I want to go over. Um, after I of course show the figure off, so I'll get to that right now. So here is of course the lovely Hokusai right here. Um, overall, again, a gorgeous design for this figure. I really love the way she came out. Assembly process was again probably, you know, the most difficult sort of thing I've ever had to deal with with the figure so far. Just obviously there's a lot of pieces to put together and some of them are fragile and it can be hard to get into those areas to get you know, pretty much everything just flush with the figure and also the base itself um unfortunately it's you know you can scratch it off easily if you're not careful so yeah overall i still would recommend her if you are a big hokusai fan or if you just love you know the design of this figure in general and thankfully right now like she's pretty much like retail price and you know maybe a little bit less than that so yeah i overall do hope that my review of this figure helps with your decision to whether or not pick her up or not. So now some also quick updates um, in my life that happened within like the past week or so. The first big one is that I managed to find another job. So I definitely feel a lot better. You know, I feel like some weight has been lifted off my shoulders because obviously that was just sort of a big source of stress for me and you know, I'm glad I have that sort of security right now income wise because again as a figure collector I feel like you definitely need a job um, there's no way around it um, you know just to have that you know source of income and definitely with my last job because of the cut hours I just I couldn't you know I need to find another job definitely to help sort of obviously you know support the figure collection and also of course you know I still have student loans to pay off so obviously hopefully you know I get a bunch of hours so I can also have some money to go towards the student loans as well and yeah so obviously you know I feel like I'm doing also a lot better mentally I feel like obviously weight has been lifted off my shoulders and I feel distressed thankfully and yeah <laughs> so that's pretty much my update on that I am feeling you know a lot more happy and a lot more secure and also with the job, I still have to go to orientation next weekend and I'm not too sure how many days a week I'll be working or how long the hours will be. So obviously my schedule may or may not change, we'll have to see. Um, I might do obviously some updates about that, but you know, I apologize if some videos will be slow then just because, you know, I have to focus on the work itself. After that, I guess some like videos, I'm a little bit behind on my monthly hauls. I'm basically thinking of combining two months worth of figures into one video. So obviously I still have to do, you know, December, January, February, and March. March, I just got the payment request, so I have to pay for those and then they'll get shipped to me. So yeah, I still have to record at least December and January. And that's pretty much like my idea is just to combine two months worth of figures into one video just to make it a little bit, you know, easy and you know some people like longer videos so you know i might as well do it like that 
So pretty much the next video I have sort of planned is kind of actually a figure meme sort of video. So it's like the person had like a template and then it was like different like categories and such. And I thought I might as well do that to just give my thoughts on some figures I have on my collection and, you know, thoughts about other figures and such. So that's pretty much going to be the next video. It's hopefully going to be relatively easy to edit and such. So, you know, look forward to that within like the next week or so. You know, it shouldn't be that hard to edit and record, but yeah. And then after that, you know, I'm going to be doing the whole videos again. So that's my idea for the next couple of videos. And yeah, so the overall concludes this figure review. Thank you all again so much for your patience and watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are, and take it easy. Goodbye!